Greece and the crisis in the European Union has been in the news for some time now, so it's long past due that I did a video on it. So it's, and, and just so we have a time context, because you might be watching this video far in the future, this video is being done in May 2012. So we really don't know how all of this is going to play out, but I hope over the next few videos to, to, to lay out the potential scenarios and what might be the risks and drawbacks, uh, drawbacks of each of them. So this right over here, that is Greece. And so let's just think about it on a very, at a very high level what the situation that they find themselves in. So when you look at this chart right over here, the most obvious thing, and it actually pops out from this top line right over here, their public debt is growing at a dramatic level. And their debt to GDP, this is actually the more relevant thing, because you might have a huge amount of debt, but if your GDP, if the productivity of the country is high, that might not be that big of a problem. What matters is how much you owe relative to how much that you can actually produce. And we see right over here the debt to GDP ratio is a percentage. So this debt is a percentage of GDP. It's well over 100%. It is well over 100% for Greece. And you can see a large part of that is because the public revenue, the taxes that the Greek government gets, it's consistently lower than their public expenditures. So let me write this down. So you have, you have taxes. Taxes are less, than, are less than spending, which lead to deficits. Deficit is how much you couldn't afford or how much how much spending you have above and beyond your revenues in a given year. And so they have deficit spending on a year by year basis, which increases their debt. The debt is the total amount of money that they owe. And that's this top line right over here. So this leads to increasing debt, increasing debt right over here. But that's not the only problem. Because as their debt keeps increasing, people start to become more and more suspicious of whether the government will actually is actually good for good for their IOUs, whether the government will actually pay back that debt. And so as the government's debt becomes riskier and riskier, people start demanding higher and higher interest rates. So the debt goes up, and as the debt goes up, people think that they're not a good they're not a good borrower, so they want higher interest. Interest goes up. But now that makes things even worse, because we were already running deficits. We were already spending more than we were bringing in taxes. Now we have to spend even more on the interest on our debt. So if you were spending 10% on your interest in one year, so if you had $100 billion, you have to spend $10 billion. Now if the interest rates go to 15%, you have to spend $15 billion on that. And so that's going to make your spending on interest go up, so that's going to make the debt go up even more. So Greece finds itself in a situation like this. So you might immediately say, well, you know, there, there seems to be a fairly straightforward solution here. Why don't they? Why don't they do some combination of increasing taxes? So why don't they increase taxes? And maybe more, even more importantly, why don't they decrease spending? Why don't they decrease, decrease spending? And the first cut is a political situation. Because these spending, this spending right over here, these are, for the most part, these are promises to people. These might be government obligations. These might be pensions. There might be retirees that are dependent on this. It could be other types of government programs. So if you decrease that spending, the people who are, who are losing out on those entitlements, they're not going to be too pleased with you. And so politically, that's probably not the best thing to do. But there might be the, the, uh, brave Greek leaders who say, well, no, this is what we have to do to save the country. We're willing to cut that spending. But that by itself, if, even if someone was willing to do it, it still isn't clear whether it's a good idea. Because you might have noticed this other line right over here. This other line, real GDP growth. Greece right over here is in a fairly severe recession. They have a lot of unemployment. Clearly, uh, uh, factories aren't producing at the levels that they could actually produce. So if you either do some combination of increasing your taxes, increasing the government revenue, and decreasing spending, that actually will that will actually suck air out of the economy. So this combination of things, and you've probably heard this word a lot, this combination of things, and it, it tends to focus on the decreasing spending in a very significant way. This is referred to as austerity. Austerity. The word austere just generally means someone who doesn't have a lot of frills. They just deal with the you know, most bare necessities. They really kind of cut things to the bone. And so when a lot of people are saying, hey, Greece, you have to do austerity measures. And there's actually already been a couple of rounds of austerity measures. You need to decrease your spending in a big way. But the problem is austerity sucks money out of the economy. 
And so austerity leads to the economy slowing further. Economy slowing, the economy slows further. And then if the economy slows further, that's actually going to hurt your taxes. So the economy, the economy makes your taxes, makes your taxes, your actually revenue that you go that, that you're getting go down. And then that actually could make your deficits even worse. Your deficits even worse because now people say, oh my God, their economy is bad too. They're even less likely to be able to pay it. Interest rates will go up. And then since the tax revenue goes goes down, and a lot of the spending isn't tied to the economy, a lot of the spending actually goes up with the economy. It might be unemployment insurance, and more people might retire pensions. And so that could actually make things worse. And that's actually what has happened over the last few years. Because, and we'll talk more about this, the the Greeks were the, the Greeks were given some help from the rest of the European Union in exchange. The rest of the European Union said, "Well, if you're going to help you, you got to take some pain." And the pain that you had to take were these austerity measures right over here. But these austerity measures actually made the economy do even worse, which made it which made the debt as a percentage of GDP even higher because now the GDP itself was shrinking at an even larger and larger rate. So if you think just just all of these aspects there was no obvious answer here. You do austerity, you're it, it's kind of a bad situation because that's going to hurt the economy, you're going to become even less productive as at, at least in the short term. And if you do and on top of that it's hugely politically unpopular and it, to the point with, where you have such high unemployment that it's becoming politically unstable. So I'll leave you there. I'll let you mull over the situation. And in the next video, I will talk about what a, what a normal independent country, truly independent, both fiscally and monetarily independent country would do in a situation like this, given Greece's situation. And then we'll talk about why Greece kind of can't do it in its current context.